Colonel McGregor wrote a book about how to reform the military. It was very popular. Nobody follows it. Uh, and that's why he stopped at being a colonel and he's not a general because he wrote a book that was critical of the military and that stopped his promotion inside the military. Um, so here's what he has to say about uh, what's happening in Taiwan. Full administration in living memory. Uh, we don't have anyone that qualifies as a statesman. Statesmanship involves advancing American interests at the least cost to the American people. There, none of that is in play here. We're dealing with a group of posers, people who are posturing. Posturing is not statesmanship. And the American people need to understand something that no one has bothered to tell them. That during World War II, Taiwan was the unsinkable aircraft carrier of the Imperial Japanese Armed Forces. All the major invasions of China were launched from Taiwan. Beijing will not allow Taiwan to become a garrison state for American armed forces or Japanese armed forces or any foreign power. And if they think that we are going to ally ourselves with Taiwan, if they think we are going to intervene to defend that island in the event of a dispute, then we will be at war with China for the reasons that I just outlined. And we are not prepared for that. We are grossly overstretched. We don't have the logistical infrastructure. And frankly, there's an old adage that everyone should remember. A ship's a fool to fight a fort. You have to fight China from the sea. We can't win that. China can absorb everything we throw at it. And the Chinese are happy to sit there, let us travel thousands of miles to reach them, and then sink us. This, is, I, I, I don't know why every show on TV is not covering this right now. This seems like one of the craziest things that's happened in my lifetime. Do you have any speculation and guess as to why the Biden administration would want this? Well, the Biden administration and its predecessors, frankly, treated everything that the Russian government said for the last 15 years about Ukraine with complete contempt. They're repeating that process. We see how well that's worked out in Ukraine. The yeah. Russians were always serious. Th hundreds of thousands of lives have been lost in this war in Ukraine that we should have acted quickly to stop. Now we're provoking the Chinese over an, over an issue that is at least as strategically important to them. That's uh, beyond belief. So, now, Jackson, Kurt, Steph, do you watch any other news like cable news do you see any other cable news people covering this like this i remember msnbc where they did an advanced war game <laughs> 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 i just see that coverage but no, <laughs> no, no nothing else that's right that's right jackson do you watch any have you seen the coverage of this taiwan thing from other news outlets i haven't really not only other mainstream media news outlets but other quote-unquote you know, anti-war independent YouTube channels are gunning for war against China right now, it seems like. Bringing on people such as Josh Rogan oh. and, uh, you know, clamoring for war against China over the most absurd lies I've ever heard in my life. You're talking, uh, you're... Colonel Douglas McGregor there is just speaking truth to power. Wait, are you saying we don't have as much invested in this as China? We want the right for Pelosi to go where she wants. <laughs> <laughs> You think we're going to give that up because China's ready about invasion? Jo jo Josh, Josh Rogan goes out and says, you don't understand. This is about Pelosi cementing her legacy. You don't think that's worth starting World War Three over? With NVIDIA stock? <laughs> <laughs> you got to be kidding me. So you're talking about Josh Rogan when... Uh, what Jack, what uh, Jackson is referring to is he's talking about Josh Rogan, who's the douchebag from the Washington Post, who uh, lied about Syria and was sh shitting on Tulsi, called her a traitor, a potent puppet, all that stuff, because she told the truth about Syria, not for any other reason. And uh, they brought, I guess, they brought him on on ta on what is it called, breaking points? Yes. Oh, really? So they brought him on breaking points uncritically and let Josh Rogan, this guy, just say every. You know, it was like the CIA was sitting at their show and nobody pushed back. Right. But their own audience did. And that's I saw that their own audience pushed back. And that was the second time they had someone like that on. They had Jacob Hel Hel Helberg on from CSIS, which is an arms industry pro-war think tank. And they had him on not too long ago to sell the war with China as well. So 
that that's their motive there. They're just pro war when it comes to China. That's that's weird. We that's that's weird, isn't it? <laughs> I think that's weird. You're supposed to be a populist. Populists aren't for freaking stupid nuclear wars. <laughs> it's not that weird when you when you dive into uh, you know where these people came from. You know, they're not. It's not like they were a comedian their whole life and and decided to start a YouTube channel. They were born out. Oh, hold on. Jackson's freezing. I want to oh. hear it. I want to hear that. You. They were born what? I said people like Sagar and Jetty were born out of anti-China think tanks that were funded by the arms industry. And he's still on their payroll. He still is. So, again, does it make him a bad guy? <laughs> <laughs> it, it makes him someone we have to uh, convince uh, that his policy ideas are horrible. Uh, that's that's a, I would do it. I would do an outreach to Sagar. To that's Washington what, brain people. Maybe he's got one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just, needs to find I help. like that guy saga. I, I, I wonder what uh, like do, is everybody from DC? When every time I would play there, especially like kind of the hipper rooms there, wasn't hipsters. It was like these junior House of Cards larva. Ha! They're not. It wasn't like Brooklyn had hipsters. DC had these people that were like in their early twenties and jaded, like beyond all Jackson Hinkle the dive jaded, like. <laughs> Uh, like they were into it. it, like they were all about it. The the grossness of it. I just my, you know, Kurt. I don't really notice that stuff. My comedy is so powerful; it overwhelms <laughs> whoever happens to be seated in there. They there's, they have no defense for it. <laughs> no matter if they're hipsters or whatever. No matter if they're Democratic yeah, voters. It or, breaks down or, all. Yeah, it just just my comedy just cuts through all that shit like a hot knife through butter. <laughs> and. Uh, if you, if you don't think so, you should come out maybe and see me this, uh, well, this Tuesday. We're going to be in uh, Indianapolis at the Helium Comedy Club. Wednesday at the Louisville Comedy Club. Thursday, we're going to be somewhere else. Oh, we're going to be at Go Bananas, one of my favorite clubs I'm going to in Go Cincinnati. Bananas. I love Go Bananas. Yeah, it's a good club. Uh, so come see me there, and you'll, and you'll be the judge about my comedy. <laughs> so... Um, People don't do people. So let me ask. I'm asking you, Jackson. I'm going to go to a comedy club tonight and I'll ask people, but I haven't really been going out lately. Uh, are people what? what is the word on the street? Are people like this? Do they get that this China thing is bullshit or are they falling for it like they fell for Ukraine? I don't think the uh, jury is out yet. I, I I think most people understand that it's pretty insane to go to war over a Pelosi visit to Taipei. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I will say that uh, well, when you say it like that, <laughs> even even some in the mainstream media have been already writing P. Oh, hold on. To do this. And hang on. Uh, you said it, that some of the mainstream media have been writing what? There's already several people, several, you know, top journalists uh, or top regarded journalists amongst the mainstream elite who are condemning Pelosi for taking this absolutely unhinged action of going to Taipei, knowing full well what it risks and what it's going to cause and what it already has caused, China's response. Um, so that's that's a big difference from what we saw with Ukraine, is already people are very worried and understand the, the large-scale ramifications that are going to unfold if we go to war against China, because Europe will not be there to save us if we go to war against China like they aided us for Ukraine. China has nuclear bombs. I don't know what <laughs> people are thinking. What about just that TikTok? Is, like, <laughs> aren't we like really entrenched with them? How's that possibly going to work? Well, they make all our stuff. Yeah. How can we go to war with them? They make, I mean, we could, we, we, we had to ask them for masks during are, COVID. Are right? our slaves going to have to make shoes now? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're doing live stand up comedy coming to your town, Indianapolis, Louisville, Cincinnati, Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Detroit, Rochester. Go to jimmydorcomedy.com for a link for all the tickets for all our dates. See you in Denver, too. <laughs>